Hi folks and welcome to Chris Reviews. So for today's review I'm back with San Martin once again looking at their new 300m tuna model. This is the SN003. If you haven't done so already and if you find value in my reviews please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel, I really do appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's get into the review. The Seiko Tuna has polarised watch fans for many years, with some loving its design and some just thinking it's plain ugly. With its round steel shroud, it was dubbed the Tuna Can by fans, as it does quite literally resemble a can of tuna. Now, having owned almost every 300m tuna variant over the years, it's a watch that I love and that I know very well. But with a price tag from Seiko of more than £1,500 for one of their new models, that's an eye-watering uh, just less than $2,000, I think the demand for good tuna homage watches will continue to rise, and of course that's where this SN003 from San Martin comes in. So looking at the dimensions of the San Martin then, we have a 47mm wide case, 15.2mm thickness, 22mm lugs, 44.2mm lug to lug, very short lug to lug there, and on its applied rubber strap this one weighs in at 145 grams. Price wise I paid 235 US dollars, that equates to around 178 pounds. In timekeeping, this one houses the NH36 movement, mine is keeping plus 4 seconds per day. Now I bought this from the Watch Dives website, I had no issues as always, great service as ever, but it's also available from the San Martin store on AliExpress as well, I'll leave links to both, you can check them out. So packaging wise, I received the standard San Martin armoured box, instruction booklet, stamped and dated warranty card and a spring bar tool as well. I also got this rather nice quality NATO thrown in as well. You get two years warranty from uh, San Martin, but you get an extra year, you get three years with watch dives. So looking at the case, we have that steel round shroud around the outside and it is well finished with a circular brush finish and a contrasting high polish to those cutouts to operate the rotating bezel. The bezel itself features nice chunky indentations to aid grip, again finished in a high polish. A steel bezel insert completes the look, it's nicely engraved with those numbers and I especially like the loomed triangular pip at the 12 there. It's 120 click the bezel and it turns very smoothly. Now the crown is also well finished and nicely machined, it operates very well and it has this uh, signed shark logo. Now I'm not too sure where the shark comes from, I would have preferred to have seen the hex logo on there but it is nicely finished all the same. Now covering the dial we have a beautiful piece of double domed sapphire crystal. It is very nice quality, loads of AR coating on there and it shows off the dial very well. And speaking of the dial, I really do like this dial. It's matte black with what remind me somewhat of SKX style hour markers and the triangle there at the 12. It's nice, simple, automatic and 300 meter text at the 6 there and we have that lovely San Martin Hex logo at the 12. It's interesting to note that this is a no date dial and I think it looks better as a result. It's legible and it's uncluttered. The dial itself is completed with a tuna inspired handset but not from the 300 meter range but borrowed instead from the spring drive tuna. I think it looks great, I love the centre portion of the hands being black, it aids legibility even further in my opinion and it looks attractive. Those hands also have been well finished. 
The case back is notably high quality here. It's very thick, substantial and it's been nicely engraved. It's also been very well finished. Now, I'm not sure why there seems to be the shark on the case back as well as the crown. I think personally it would have looked much more cohesive if that San Martin Hex logo was carried throughout instead, but it's a small gripe and not a deal breaker by any means. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think of this San Martin tuner so far what do you think of that shark logo i'm always interested to know your thoughts so the rubber strap that you receive with this is like the rest of the watch high quality it's a nice rubber it's soft it's comfortable and it doesn't attract lint or dust i do like how it tapers from 22 millimeters at the lugs down to 20 millimeters at that buckle and speaking of the buckle the buckle is superb it's chunky solid and just have a look at that level of finishing we also have the same shark logo once more at the end of the rubber strap there and here it is on my 7.5 inch wrist. As you can see, it wears very nicely, and you really shouldn't let those larger dimensions on paper put you off. Thanks to that very short lug to lug distance, it wears very comfortably, and I think this will suit a pretty large range of different wrist sizes. And of course, if there's one thing a tuner must have, it's outstanding loom. And this San Martin doesn't disappoint. The dial hands and loom pip on the bezel are all loomed with green C3 and it performs very nicely. It's even, long lasting and it makes this look fantastic when the lights go out. So let's sum up my thoughts about this tuner from San Martin and come to a verdict. I think San Martin have produced not only a fitting tuna homage here, but a capable and attractive watch in its own right. The build quality and level of finish is first class here, with an attractive mix of brushed and polished surfaces and details. I love that dial, no date and simple, it's uncluttered and functional, exactly how a dive watch should be. I also like that handset, again, so easily legible at a glance. So what am I not so keen on? Well, I'm not too keen on this mysterious San Martin Shark logo. I think it's fine on its own, but I am a big fan of that Hex logo, and I think I would have preferred to see that throughout rather than this slight mismatch between the dial, crown and case back. But as I mentioned earlier, this is a pretty minor complaint and doesn't detract from the watch overall. Now, although I have no way of testing water resistance, unfortunately, I see no reason why San Martin's 300 meter claim of water resistance is not achievable with this. The watch is solid, it feels very well put together, everything works smoothly, and it's been very well constructed. So how does this compare to the Seiko Tuna then? Well, for me, of course, the Seiko Tuna does win. Uh, it's one of the nicest uh, spring-loaded crowns you'll ever see on the Tunas, uh, and of course it has that high-torque 7C movement. But having said that, I don't think the canyon in price difference between the San Martin and the Seiko is necessarily representative of the difference in overall quality. This San Martin comes impressively close to the Seiko in terms of quality and how it feels on the wrist. And of course, it won't set you back £1,500 to own one. I say if you're a fan of that classic tuna shrouded case design and like me, you couldn't afford to pick up the Seiko, I genuinely think this SN003 is a hugely appealing alternative. It looks and it feels fantastic, and it performs very well too. It really does give that tuna experience for only sardine money. So if you're thinking about picking one of these up or you want to see more, then don't forget I'll leave a link to both Watch Dive's website and the San Martin store on AliExpress down below. You can check them out. 
So that just leaves me to thank you all once again for making it to the end of another video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So thanks very much for watching folks and I'll see you all in the next review.